You're listening to REI USA Podcast, your prime resource for genuine real estate growth. If you want to jumpstart your real estate career, whether in active or passive investing, this is the right show for you. Join professional home renovator Stacey Rossetti as she talks to REI USA teachers and expert investors willing to share their tips and tricks to get started in investing, sharing actionable advice in every area of real estate, all while putting legality, habitability, and safety above everything else. Combine their unparalleled advice with your strong drive for success, and that incredible real estate fortune will be yours. Now, here's your host, Stacy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. Hello, everyone. My name is Yukiko Nakayama. I'd like to thank Stacy for giving me opportunity to share what I learned in the last 15 years of my real estate experience. Today, I'd like to share two topics, how to pick your niche and how to identify good market. So um, I will touch on my background. I'm originally from Japan. I came here to study and get my MBA. After my MBA, I started working for big six consulting companies, working on the IT project. After working in the IT industry in the Silicon Valley, I felt like it was time to change a course and then start my own business and then switch to real estate after moving to Northern Virginia. And I'm the president of the Puma Investment, and Puma Investment has done small scale redevelopment project in DC. The project covers single family redevelopment, condo conversions, value add small apartment, financing with commercial loans and private investor. We are currently looking to invest in a commercial project, likely like self storage, like Stacy does. And our goal is to create the wealth for our partners through real estate investment. Uh, in my spare times, I do scuba diving, hiking, and karaoke. I'm very competitive in nature. So I will try to beat my husband to score higher in a karaoke shop, but never succeeded. And uh, I'm teacher at REI USA. I teach at 7 p.m. Second Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. The topic is small apartment building. I currently own small apartment building in Washington, D.C. And I realize that owning and managing small apartment building is much different from owning single family home or investing in 100 plus unit large apartment buildings. Not so many people are talking about it. So please join our class if you are interested in a small apartment building. And our topic, the first topic is how to pick your niche. I think many people pick your niche just based on how much they can make or because everyone is talking about niche without considering their personality or their tendency. After working in a different area of the real estate, including being a landlord, flipping, rehabbing, and investing passively, I realized I tend to towards one area instead of others in the real estate space. It hit me after a decade or so. Finally, I figured out that I put into one particular space because of my personality. So the first step is a self-awareness. You think you know yourself, but sometimes you don't. To find out your personality profile, I will recommend taking a test. Uh, there are several tests available to you. Uh, for example, Kobe testing, you can measure uh, your instinctive way of doing things by knowing you can maximize your potential. And then also uh, DISC profile. DISC is an acronym that stands for the four domain, four main personality profile described in the DISC model. D, dominance, I, influence, S, deadliness, and C, continuous. And I'm not sure many people uh, know DISC profiles. However, 
try this profile. I think it's pretty um, common, like HR person or some other uh, companies are uh, used to kind of see what's the employees, you know, uh, profiles. And uh, for example, a person with deep personality tend to be a confident and places an emphasis on the accomplishing bottom line result. So it's very direct and very dominant and then, you know, uh, get down, you know, very quickly. And people with I personality tend to be more open and place an emphasis on the relationship and the influencing or persuading others. You can see people like really talking, 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 and they can't stop talking. Uh, I think these are the people with I personalities. And people with S personality tend to be dependable and place an emphasis on the cooperation and sincerity. So they don't like confrontations and they kind of keep low profiles and then, you know, working towards the goal steadily. And people with C personality tend to place an emphasis on the quality, accuracy, expertise, and competency. So they have a very high standard and they cannot stand if they come across other people slacking. So I think everyone has some mixture of personalities, but they're usually prominent in the one aspect. So I'm probably close to the people with C personalities tend to be very accurate, precise, and detail-oriented. If you're interested, you can take uh, uh, disk profiles at the uh, some website, and then you can also ask your friends and families. They probably know you very well. And then this is the um, disk profile I took at the uh, Tony Robbins site. And then my profile style is formalist. So the formalist rely upon procedures and structure in all aspects of the life. They are detail oriented and seek perspectives. And they need to know the expectations and timetable for their work. They can get bogged down in details and then will not rush important decisions. They will take a risk if they have the fact to support it. They may be initially suspicious or personal complaint, place or flattery. So that's kind of me uh, based on the disk profile. So based on this test, I can be uh, bogged down in the details. So sometimes I just keep you know, researching, researching, and getting more information, and then sometimes cannot make a decision to purchase or invest, something like that. So maybe some people, you know, tend to be fall in this personality profile. So that's what happened in my past real rehab experience. I was in this analysis paralysis mode, going to every single comp in the area, and then finally, my mentor kicked my butt to push to commit to purchase the properties. Without his push, I'm not sure I would have done my first rehab. My first rehab turned out to be very successful. And then I also tend to get upset if I don't get the constant feedback. And I also have a very high standard for quality. So I have to adjust those expectations to work with my contractors and uh, working with rehab and mentors. But my detail-oriented personalities work very well with our rehab business. We have to work with certain orders with many factors impacting our ability to put permit and work on a project in DC. You cannot be all over the map and go with gut feeling. You have to assess risk associated with the project and go over sales comp, you know, specifically for, you know, high stake project. So next, what's your goal? My initial goal was make $200 per month for rental. My time was limited. I was raising small kids. I only had a small windows 
each day to work on my real estate business. My husband and I had a decent uh, credit, but not much cash. My English was limited. You may have a different goal, but the match up with your personality type is a beneficial and then end up long lasting career in a real estate. Next, uh, please look at the options in the real estate space. If you don't have money and knowledge, you can start becoming a dog, bad dog. Bad dog is a finding motivated seller for investor. After you become knowledgeable, you can become a wholesaler who can put deals under the contract and assign to the investor who buy the deal from you and make more money that way. Or if you have some money and knowledge, you may want to start rehabbing and rental. If you aspire to do the commercial, you can work as an operator and syndicator who find the deal, syndicate the deals, manage and operate the deal, which can be a tons of work. Or you can become a syndicator and then work on the capital side of the business. If you have a tons of money, you can maybe start family office to invest and purely on money to more significant project are looking for returns. I think anyone can start at any point if you gain enough knowledge, relationship, and access to the capital. However, keep your personality and tendency in mind. You may find more satisfactions in the working in the real estate space that you choose instead of not being happy. So here's what I did in 2010. I started working on the getting my rental. I work on the direct marketing campaign. The mayor said, we, we buy houses, cash, uh, quick closing. And the campaign hit the seller at the good timing. He planned to buy a bigger building and needed cash for down payment. I hired someone much communicative and persuasive at $100 an hour late, because you know I'm not really perceptive or anything. And he successfully negotiated the deals and I purchased the property. It ended up becoming a very steady rental for long times. And I sold the property in uh, 2010 and doubling my money. Another case, when you want to execute your plans, for example, maybe you are agent or business owner who need to make a sales. Um, you need to work on uh, uh, social media, getting these making leads to appointment and converting appointment to sellers and buyers. Suppose you are not good with consistent marketing effort, you may need to partner up with someone or hire out, like I did um, when I was negotiating a deal with a seller to buy a rental. Or you can pick up a book to change your habit. I highly recommend a book called Atomic Habit. You can start changing small habit like going to bed early um, that could make profound effect and you know spread into other aspects of your life and then lastly when you start making progress it's time to keep track of your progress you need to measure what matter to you if you're agent you need to keep track a number of lead and how you are converting listing sold buyer closed. If you are landlord and then if you are doing rental, you have to keep track which property is making money and how long the turnover is taking. You can pick your KPI by yourself and then uh, keep track of your progress. And then also there is a book called Major What Matters by John Doe and Google Follow and Build the Business Around the Concept. So I highly recommend um, you read the book. And then you can also do a weekly review to see where it went well and not well in a weekly basis. And then you can change the uh, course of the actions uh, based on the weekly review. Also, you can join the mastermind or find the accountability partner to keep each other accountable for your progress. I also have that. Um, accountability partner. So I check in with him, you know, every week to check on the progress of each other. So far, if you have uh, any questions, um, you can 
you raise a hand and then I can answer accordingly or you can put in a chat. Um, this is the, the first topics about the finding niche. If you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand or I can answer questions via chat. Uh, Stacy, do you see any questions or anything? So next topic, I'd like to talk about how to pick your market. The first, I think it's best to try your backyard because it's closer and if you're doing the small rental or something, it's best to see you can check uh, your backyard uh, very often and then uh, it's best to you know know the market very well already so you can uh, start from there and uh, please check demographic data where is the job growth what was the rent growth in the past what is the income growth in area you can check the demographic data from census data from the government and then you can check also job growth in uh, uh, the government website and uh, rent growth can be tricky for commercial there's a company called costa which is really expensive but that i think you can easily find some uh, data available like apartmentguide.com or uh, rentometer.com you can check how the rent grows in that area also you can check household income growth with the, some government information and then if you are in the area job growth is strong and rent increases you can successfully tailor to the market by digging data which are majority of people buying and then what type which price point like if you're a rehaber I think you should really pay attention to like uh, what's the medium income people can afford. Like if they can afford townhouses and then they're buying in a specific area, I think this there that's the area you should focus on flipping the houses. And then for rentals, you really want to see like a, a rent increase. For example, in DC, you have a rent control. Even though DC is very strong job growth, you know, stuff like that. If you have a rent control, you may not be able to increase the rent, you know, in a kind of high, higher rate. So you pay attention which area is good for which type of the investment type. We have rental, um, the different type of the investment required different type of data digging and the market research. And then, of course, please drive around the market and then subscribe to local newspaper. Even you are doing like a small uh, apartment building or single family home, please pay attention to commercial development because people move into specific area because there's amenity, new gym coming, new, uh, you know, like a restaurants coming in. So amenity is very important for you know, the, the market you, you are looking at. And uh, BizNow has um, some commercial real estate event. They also uh, has newsletter. So if you subscribe, you can get um, a lot of information what's coming, what's uh, the development coming in your local area. And if you are in an area with no growth or declining population and job, I think there's still prob probably an opportunity at the micro level because everything is macro level. But I think if you really look in the micro level, street level, um, you know, your, your local level, I think there's probably opportunity, but you may consider out of state and remote investment. If you decide to invest remotely, it might be better to scale to a commercial project like a self-storage like Stacy does. And then if that's the case, where is the excellent market to invest in a self-storage? You look at the demand and supply and then pick the market. There is some balance and then take advantage of the, you know, uh, the market. And uh, I think this is the uh, section of the how to find a good market. And this is 
my contact information. Um, if you like to get the uh, like uh, seven things to keep in mind to buy the small apartment building, I have a checklist. If you send me email uh, with the bad ass in the subject line, I can send those uh, checklists to you. And uh, that's the end of the presentations. And then if you have any questions, I can answer on, or in a chat. Thank you for listening to this episode of REI USA. Let these golden pieces of advice clear your path towards thriving real estate success and start making those amazing financial opportunities work for you. If you liked this episode and want to get more of these valuable secrets, be sure to subscribe to the show at www.rei-usa.com. Leave a rating too and share with your friends. Until next time.